Hey, what's up guys? Here in the workshop today, working on a little firearm project here. And that is a sling setup for a customer, a client, friend, whatever you want to call it. This is his brand new, only a couple months old, hasn't been a, many shots taken out of this. Let's see if I can get this sock off here. This is a Henry Lever Action 22. I believe that this thing takes uh, 22 long, 22 short. I'm not sure if it takes magnums as well. Short, long, and long rifle, yeah. So, no magnums, but this, this is a beautiful, beautiful firearm. So, it's a, it's a very petite firearm. Just beautiful, made in USA. That is beautiful. Got that walnut stock there. Very, uh, like I said, it's a very petite firearm. Nice and light, but we need a sling. This thing does not come with swivel mounts. Uh, your options, there is a clamp type of outfit you can buy for the front here to mount on the tube, and then you'd have to, I guess, drill and plant a swivel for back here. The customer does not want that. They don't want to alter the gun in any way, keep it completely factory. So we have to come up with a sling option. Now I've done some research, there are options out there like it, but uh, we're going to come up with our own here. So we're going to have some type of harness to grab on here, and we're also going to mount to that tube, but we need to come up with that today. Before I get started doing anything, I want to wrap up this whole center portion of the gun here just so I don't have to be quite as careful with it or I, just to minimize the risk of getting a little scratch in the bluing or on the walnut there I'd hate for anything like that to happen. It'll just make me feel more comfortable while I'm working with the gun as well. So just wrap it in some bubble wrap and after that in some some packing like cellophane because we don't need to touch any of this central portion of the gun here, so just be just make good sense to have it enclosed. When we use it up, I'll get to popping that later. It'll be some good fun. Perhaps me and the wife will sit down in front of the TV tonight and, and pop all these uh, all these bubbles. This bubble wrap. <laughs> now here is my intentions for that rear harness. I drew this up the other day in uh, in church during the preaching. Sorry, Pastor, if you're uh, if you're watching this. <laughs> but this is going to wrap around the buttstock here. This is going to wrap around the side. This is going to come down underneath, right where the swivel stud would be around here, and then a strap will be able to contact there.
yet another awesome thing about having a big heavy freestanding bench and a big woodworking vice like this is that you can customize what you need on your bench often I'm working on something awkward like this right here and uh, I, I just can't have something set on my bench it doesn't allow me so I can clamp this piece of wood here and I could put this out two feet if I wanted and uh, I have this post so over why just a piece of scrap wood here the issue is this needs to go over here like this and I need to mark my stitching holes now to do that flat on a bench would be very difficult but with this piece of wood here I can get right in there you see so you just never never run out of uses for a good bench like this I can just set this here maybe I'll even put a little clamp on it and we have so this piece inside here will sit against the stock of the rifle and this outside piece is going to be lifted off and that's where the back of our snaps are going to be against the leather we want to design this or I'm trying to design this so we have no hardware anything touching the stock of the rifle just soft leather because you know the least little thing will scratch into that walnut that perfect matte finish and we do not definitely don't want to see that happen Now usually anytime I'm drilling stitch holes like this I will make the two surfaces together first and then punch my holes down through but just like I had to use this piece of wood extension here to uh, mark the holes I wouldn't have been able to to drill these holes so I drilled in the top first where I could lay it out flat now I'll transfer all the holes just a little finishing nail here and then I'll be able to lay the other piece flat since it's not stitched lay the other piece flat on the drill press and drill those I always have good success with this just like that I have all my stitch holes now I can lay this flat and drill them and then I can lay this over and we should have a perfectly matched face Now given that this is the type of outfit where there's no uh, there's no templates, there's no patterns, I'm not drawing, I'm cutting out everything is trial and error here. So I haven't done a lot of filming, I've done quite a bit of head scratching. But this is my first time now trial fitting this setup to the rifle. So I'm just gonna see. So this snaps up nicely. nice and tight because the stock tapers in and it's built for a space up roughly three inches it shouldn't be able to slide off the tail of the buttstock the gun also is not going to be able to come down through it because we have this tail strap here I have a Chicago screw there where our strap will span all the hardware for this project is all gun metal black so it matches perfectly the snaps, the Chicago screw, even the the state the snaps, the Chicago screw there are all matching. Now this, and this is not my own design, this is something I picked up. I don't want that go on. Like this, I think. Hmm, maybe I like this way. So this is something I picked up from a Google image search. Now you could, I could go through, the leather's thin enough to fit through the tube there, but everywhere I saw on the line, ran it right around the barrel itself. Now, should be able to slide the keeper up snug to the barrel. Just like that. No sign of moving. 
feels great, nice soft supple leather. It'll feel even softer once it gets oiled. And now for the last job of the day, that is dyeing the leather. And this is going to drink up some dye. And I'm all out of my nitrile gloves. New ones have not arrived yet. That's okay. If you're doing a lot of leather work, you'll be surprised at how much dye you actually go through. I'm going to go too wild with the coating of dye here. Nice light single coat, kind of random stroke so it'll look a little bit, a little bit uneven, a little bit aged, a little bit antique. And then we'll oil it and that oil will even out a lot of the color. Now with a couple layers of the tan dye, we're getting close to a maroon, but it's not, the Phoebing's maroon has much more of a red cast to it, I find, whereas if you do a few layers, double up a few times on the tan, you end up with close to a maroon, but more brown shades in it, and especially once I oil it now, this is just a basic uh i believe a canola oil or is it a sunflower i don't recall there now but it'll help put in well, it'll put a bit more of a yellow tinge back into it which will translate as to more browns than the than the red from the maroon so just trying to get this color right for this uh for this gun this is a special piece and you want it to look right and, and the wrong color leather can really throw off a project. It can throw off the look of a knife or a gun or an axe. Anything where there's a, where there's a darker wood involved to start with, it's really easy to get that wrong. Unless you go with a natural veg tan finish, I find that's hard to get wrong. Which is probably my favorite finish. At this point in the game, I really like just the natural veg tan finish leather. Just oiled. It's what I use on a lot of my projects lately. I'll give this a minute here now to soak in. It won't take long at all. And the surface will be back dry. And then we'll be able to get some mink oil on there, which is a, which is more of a grease, like a waxy grease, than it is an oil like this. And that will give this a nice finish. We'll darken it a little more, which is good. 
There we go. Oh, look at the rich pattern in that leather. Lots of like grain structure to this leather here. It's really, really beautiful. Some leather just when it's done is just like really pure, doesn't have much like variance to it. Almost looks like something like it's so homo homogenous it looks almost plastic or artificial. But this piece of hide here has a richness to it. Lots of different shades and textures and which is something I like to see. I guess that all comes down to preference once again. So you can see now the tone that this piece is taking on, which is really nice. It's even out a little bit. It's, uh, it's like I said, a maroon, but a little more on the brown sides than into the burgundies. But this mink oil now, I use just feebings. I find it really puts a richness into it. I just rub it in by hand, like this. So you can see right there already. richness that it puts into the leather and it gives it a nice it dries a little bit more matte than what you see when you first put it on but gives it a nice little bit of resistance too to the elements my favorite part here of the leather work it's putting the finish on and especially the mink oil like this I just Really love it. You don't have to worry about getting it in every single little crevice because we have a stiff bristle brush here and that will help us work it into all the surfaces. And there's finished product guys. I have a little bit of a uh, little bit of cellophane there, plastic wrap under the sheath on the butt sock still because that the dye hasn't been on there a long time. So sometimes it tends to, to bleed or leak a little bit, seep a little bit of its surface until it completely dries. So put that there just so we don't get the wood uh, stained or, or anything like that. But it fits great. I think it looks good. It seems to work really well does just what it's supposed to nice and secure feels great that nice I use a nice thin supple leather for the strap inch and a half wide strap which I think looks great I hope the customer is happy with it it was a little bit of a challenging project there but uh, overall I really like it if it doesn't suit going this way of course you can just take this off and turn this around or you can remove that Chicago screw as well and flip the strap around depending on which way you're carrying it. I'm not sure which way will be uh, most suitable yet so I'll leave that for him to figure out. Thanks for watching guys. Please hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if it's your first time here and leave me a little comment to read down below. I always enjoy reading your guys comments. So Just a nice little relaxing project for today. Thanks for watching once again. We'll see you in the next video.